All right, we'll get started. Hi, everyone. Good morning, uh, good afternoon, and good evening. Depending on where you're joining us from. And welcome to um, 4th May 2023 TOC meeting. And before we get started, a reminder um, I, we all have already known antitrust policy with the Linux, Linux Foundation meetings. It says that we all um, come from different parts of the world, different companies, and any information that we share gets shared in a public uh, forums. And like we all respect each other and we follow code of conduct. We respect each other. So with that, um, we'll jump on to announcement section. So quick reminder, the Hyperledger uh, dev uh, emails, uh, the dev later emails, the weekly emails that are sent uh, late Thursday or like early Friday uh, to different, um, the large community base. This carries information of what's the latest happenings across Hyperledger projects. So if you have an important announcement from your project that you would like to discuss or that you would like to share across to a large community base, it could be worthwhile. And um, these could carry information such as any plan that you have as part of your projects, the uh, the latest announcements from the releases, or if you want to bring attention to developers on something within your project, this is important. All you have to do is go there, uh, click the link and write down your comments. That will be added into the email. And last week, we last week's TOC call, we did go through the security policy document that Hart had put up. And quick reminder to all to read through this and add any comment that you may have so that we can start uh, formalizing the proposal. And before we continue, does anybody have any other announcements? I assume the silence means no. So um, so we will get started with this agenda and go through the quarterly um, reports. And quick uh, for the record keeping purpose, just that I'm doing the, um, um, I'm running through the meeting agendas because Tracy is on leave. Uh, Tracy is unable to join today. Um, and this is my first time, so feel free to stop me or ask me any questions if I'm skipping through some parts. And let's get started with today's agenda. And in today's agenda, first thing we do, um, let's let's quickly walk through the quarterly reports, reports that were due for submission. So these three reports came in um, this week. Some of them were submitted like three days ago and some of them a couple of days ago. I saw a few people have um, reviewed them already. And like the any, I, I would first ask if there are any open questions that anybody wants to bring up in today's discussion um, that we should concern that we should be concerned with or ask the project team. So with Hyperledger Indy, I see some questions related to the, um, oh, sorry, Dave, I did not see your hand, is there? Uh, yeah, I was just gonna ask the question that you're probably looking at. I just added it a few minutes ago. It was about Ubuntu. So this is a thing that comes up across different projects. So I thought it might be good to spend a couple of minutes understanding the plans around Ubuntu and I can share what we're doing on Fabric as well, if that helps. I'm not sure. We have Stephen on the call. Stephen. Yeah, that would be helpful. I'd love to hear. Um, basically, um, we have we have um, one just one branch, and or at least that's what we're trying to get to. And, and one version of Ubuntu is is what we're supporting. Um, we could, in theory, support. Uh, we, we, yeah, we don't want to have multiple um, branches, so. 
the comment that was made about supporting 2204 is actually a really good one um, because given the pipeline we have now, we should be able to support it. Um, assuming there are not significant actual um, dependency updates, um, it would be relatively easy to test out and see whether we support it or not. Um, so that's probably the way to go, but we just have a single branch and um, it has been stuck on 1604 because of the combined challenges of the, the, the dependencies that, that had to be addressed between 1604 and 2004 and the difficulty of the pipeline, the old pipeline we had. And so much of the work was spent on replacing the pipeline. Okay, and the second sentence I have there, at least what we found is if we build on 2004, it works on both 2004 and 2204. Yeah. But if we build on 2204, then it doesn't work on 2004. Oh, interesting. Okay. Ah, that's and so we don't have to do anything special to support both, but as long as we build on 2004, it seems to work on both 2004 and 2204. So I don't know if that's always true, but that's what we found. That's super helpful because if, if that can be true, we could upgrade the nodes. The the challenge we've got is is the practical one of of getting a whole bunch of organizations to upgrade their nodes um their os of their nodes so if we can go to 2204 directly um that will reduce debt down the line thanks for that that's really helpful mm -hmm. thanks Stephen, and thanks dave and one more comment on the Indie project was about uh, the help needed in identifying. I, I think the answer to that, um, Stephen can correct me, is that you have a way to identify inactive maintainers and then you want to realign some of those lists uh, to the right set of repositories. And yeah. You... <laughs> yeah, the bigger challenge, um... It's just the, the, you know, and looking at that and doing the work I did yesterday of evaluating all the teams we have, figure out, you know, what maintainers. So basically what I did was um, extracted all of the the members from all of the teams, um, uniqified them, and then identified the organizations as best I could from them. Um, uh, and, and the challenge that I see in that, um, the, the work is just we have too many teams, too many organizations uh, and too many um, too many repositories, first of all, but then then correspondingly too many teams. And so we have to shrink that down so that the same team that um, manages a set of of repositories um, shouldn't we, we don't need to have separate ones per. So and then there's also a bunch of cleanup. There's clearly some repositories or and or just teams that no longer need to exist. And so the plan, I my plan was to sort of propose something and see what Rye thinks of it. <laughs> I know he'll have good ideas of how to uh, uh, help out in cleaning that up. But I can come up with the, the what changes we have to do, or or at least the the project can come up with change, what changes are suitable. Thanks, Stephen. Are there any comments? Or it's too early? Uh, too early right now. Um, let's talk offline or let's yeah. talk on Discord. Yeah. Aries is the same thing. So, yep. Yeah. Perfect. And I don't see any major comments on Aries or Anon grids. Um, um, I did. Per, I think David's comment did reorganize the, the non crash report. It was just cut and paste and move things around. But um, yeah, it completely accurate that I had the the quarterly detail in the long section. So I've moved that. Stephen again. So again, a quick reminder, please review the quarterly reports and you could also leverage the details that are posted within the quarterly reports that should take you to the LX, LFX portal, giving more details, insights into how the project is performing. I saw uh, some of the pretty detailed reports from all the projects this time. And thanks Stephen for, for doing that. Um, those, those were pretty elaborate and, and 
feels great to read those reports. Um, okay, any other, um, anybody would like to bring up anything else on the quarterly reports? I'll take silence as no. So moving on to the next section of today's agenda, which is to go through past due reports. So we have two projects which are uh, past their due date in reporting. First one is um, Transact and the second one is Sawtooth. So with respect to Transact, there have been multiple discussions and reminders which were sent. There's also Discord links which are pasted which uh, talks about waiting for any save from the maintainers. And then eventually um, the final outcome of that is that project maintainers have agreed to move the project to dormant state. And that's in today's decision uh, log. We'll cover that as part of today's agenda. Any questions before we move to the sort of update? If not, then related to Sawtooth, it was due on 27th April and um, I was going through the Discord chart and found out that there was a meeting on 26th April. Um, and the discussion on that meeting was that Sawtooth team is trying to um, relook into increasing contributor base. And as part of that effort, they have uh, shared the responsibility of writing the quarterly report uh, to new contributors. So James Parry will be submitting the Q2 report and um, he's doing it for the first time. And uh, he reached out saying that he needs some more time. And given that this project is making effort in, in increasing the contributor base, um, I mean, personally, I feel it is okay to give them some more time, but any thoughts or comments from the TOC members. Yes, Peter. I agree. I think uh, just the fact that at least they responded and they said they need more time warrants that we should give them more time. Thanks, Peter. And on the Discord uh, link, you will also see that um, James has put up a draft Google Doc and he did that just to make sure that he wanted um, internal project team to confirm on the contents as he's doing it for the first time. So we may expect a, a report soon from them. And if not, we can always mind them again. Okay, um, moving on to the next section, which is, uh, the, I, I think um, the next section is the next set of projects that are due for uh, project quarterly reports. That is Iroha, which is due um, exactly a week from now, and we'll bring it up next week. No concerns there. And the discussion items for the, for today. The first item is uh, moving the Transact project to dormant state. So there have been multiple discussions going through uh, within the Transact where the Transact lib itself is moved to sort of uh, lib project. However, the project uh, code base was still there on the GitHub and it was causing confusion for the first time users or for somebody who is new to Hyperledger to think that project is actively being maintained. However, there were no uh, reports submitted it was causing a lot of confusion. And um, the project team have responded. They have explained their plans of how to move forward with the Transact project. And uh, the latest outcome of those discussions is that moving project to the dormant state. Um, before we take the decision to move project to dormant state, does anybody have any comments or thoughts that they would like to share on the project? Uh, 
um, anybody from the hypologist staff any comments? Yes, Stephen. Um, the one comment is about process. Um, I, I think Hyperledger should make sure that from now on we don't ever move a project from active to end of life without going through dormant. Um, I'm picking up the pieces of Ursa and the move we made last week. Um, Rai made a good comment that Ursa should have been dormant a long time ago, and that's fine, but we should never go directly to end of life um, without going to dormant so that we can allow anyone that needs to some time to um, address any issues. So I, I would suggest, I don't know if that uh, can be done, but uh, you know whether that needs to be done, but certainly from a, at least from a corporate memory, perspective don't don't do that again and if it can even be um put into the the project life cycle um that it can't go um you know from graduated to end of life directly remove that blue line um would be a really good idea well ursa was incubation not graduated um, point taken. Um, then remove that the red line, purple line. I don't know. It just it's I, caused no end of grief. And and if I'd known it was an option, and my fault for not knowing the process, um, I would have at least suggested we move it to dormant before we do it to end of life. Okay, I will keep that in mind. I propose that you. This is a gv file this is just text yeah, yeah i propose yeah. i propose that you make sure. your, your proposed changes here yeah yeah and uh submit that for a vote okay that's great thanks right thanks right from winging it that up i was about to ask um open the project life cycle yes so there was there were cases where it's yes, now sorry uh just uh about dormant do we call a project dormant or do we declare project dormant if it actually has been dormant that is there have been no comments to it for a while and is there a particular time period yes um so as part of the uh, previous discussions that we had toc yeah. can decide to move a project to dormant state based on the quarterly remotes that we receive and and toc can make a call Okay, so right now we don't have a particular time period. Like if the, there's been no there been no commits for the past three months, then we declare it dormant, something like that. I remember discussions uh, around the timelines. I don't think so. We have formally put up in our proposal. Yeah, um, there's, yeah. there's no official timeline in this governance document. Um, it just says slow down for a period of time. Um, I think it should be uh, easier and less pejorative for projects to move into dormant and end of life. Um, but I don't know that having a strict timeline here would would actually help that. Stephen, yes, yeah, Stephen. Um, the uh, the line that TOC decides to move the project to or from the dormant state upon request is interesting. Um, for me, I, uh, as a TOC member, I probably would have been much more willing if someone raised the issue of URSA to move it into the dormant state um, unilaterally versus waiting for the maintainers to do it and have the maintainers say, no, don't. Um, so again the upon request is interesting does that request from the maintainers or request from um joe citizen on the street um leaving that open is actually useful so that somebody like right or or um somebody else could have said hey i suggest we move ursa to dormant um and sorry to bring ursa when we're really talking about transact but um super useful so anyway thanks for highlighting that and how you get into the dormant state, I think that's a good idea. And, and I think that the TOC should take more advantage of it. Point taken, Stephen. I think it makes sense that 
we have a dormant state in between so that we are uh, notifying to the people that hey even though you see these repositories under hyperledger it's highly likely that the, there has been no updates and it has been taken uh, into notice and the community would like to move this into dormant state while we wait for more activity to happen and and um, going back to rama's question one of the point that i remember um, like maybe we can go through the previous meeting recordings as well is related to um, a few projects being in a stable case or stable condition which may not have more updates compared to other projects or which may not see more activities compared to its previous quarters um, that was one of the reason why the timeline part was intentionally not added is wrong no i think uh, what you said earlier about uh, uh, quarterly update being uh, uh, like lack of a quarterly update being the sign of dormancy i think that makes sense even if a project as you say does not need any new code or any any new changes uh, as long as the maintainers are willing to put in updates that indicates that the project should still be active okay thank you and i'm assuming stephen you will make a proposal um, related to moving to dormant see which will be up for discussion on my list to do <laughs> <laughs> okay um any thoughts from others before we proceed next okay i'll take the silence as no um i don't know if it is relevant but it's very related topic to the same topic uh, that we were discuss we were discussing about the transact and um um was it steven you raising the question on discord i remember asking uh, questions where um you asked that transact was moved to firefly was it um i mean and you suggested that something could have been done on the ursa you yeah to discuss that was the topic we just talked about which is the a bunch of things had to be moved out of ursa and are urgently being moved out of ursa as we speak um uh and it sounded like transact was in a similar state but i was more worried about the fallout from the ursa decision last week versus the transact situation well, it's it's not like the code was deleted. Um, and I will point out that, you know, Transact did move to Sawtooth Lib. Um, so that has already happened like a year ago. Um, and at your request, I did move one of the, the Ursa Python to another uh, area yeah no, i'm not complaining about what was done right i'm just saying had i realized the dormant was a possibility i would have taken it and that and it was the the you know the my lack of knowledge of of a good way to handle something that is very active but not maintained in the place it is actively used um so anyway, I'm, I'm certainly not complaining about the follow on from what was done. I'm just, dis, you know, sad that we didn't take advantage of the governance tools that we had in hand and jumped ahead a step. And that opened, uh, left a lot of explaining to be done, which I've done over the last week, to various people about why ursa is in the state it is and what we're doing about it and and so on it but i would have liked to have been able to do that explaining after the stuff had been moved not before and that's that's the the challenge that i'm lamenting N nothing more than lamenting not complaining point taken Stephen. um so we we should start doing a better job at reviewing quarterly reports and making sure we bring these concerns up ahead in time so that project teams have considerable amount of time for, for taking any action.
so i um, hope it's all good now and um we'll move on to the agenda item which is the decision item so um it's up for decision making if there are no other thoughts or comments and if somebody would like to uh, propose it or bring the matter before the toc We need a TOC member okay. to, to bring moving transact to dormant up for a vote. Motion. We need someone to second that motion. Second. All second. those, uh, I will do a roll call vote. In the matter before the TOC, moving transact to dormant. Rama, how do you vote? Aye. Peter. Aye. Marcus. Aye. Jim. I vote yes. David. Aye. Bobby. Aye. Arun. Aye. The ayes have it. Transact has been moved to dormant. Thank you. Don't I get a vote? Oh, I second it. Right. Never mind. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Stephen. <laughs> Aye. <laughs> okay. It is again approved. <laughs> Sorry, so I was using. I, so I knew I hadn't. Yeah, I was using the Zoom list, and uh, you were unmuted, so you were up in the uh, up the top of the list. So I missed you. I apologize. All good. Um, thank you all. So the decision has been made. Thanks, Rai, for the roll call out. Um, we'll move on to the next agenda item. And before we move on to the next agenda item, I just wanted to bring out uh, a thing that that was discussed in, in other um, meetings. So there was in general appreciation to the TOC work and the way the task force have been handled in the last uh, quarter or so. The way, for instance, the, the uh, security task force, the onboarding um, uh, task force that have been happening and the way uh, the team has been participating, the way discussions have been going on. So there is general appreciation on, on these things. Um, so it's it's time for us to uh, rejoice a bit and and see learn from what happened um, that made it go well compared to the previous um, ways of working. So one of the things that um, definitely was improved was a detailed scoped um, task force discussions that we had as opposed to having a a, a pretty open um, let's say open-ended conversations that we used to have previously. So that's something that we, we can be all happy about. Um, and so going, moving on to the next um, quarter, um, we, I would like us to like focus on the next set of um, priorities that different project teams have. This is an excellent forum where you all can bring in different project perspectives and what's important from the project's uh, standpoint so that we can prioritize on those task forces. I know um, there is a task force which is about optimizing the pipelines and defining if, if, there, if there's anything that we can improve uh, through the task force that can be set as a guideline uh, to all the projects. Um, I, I know this also plays important role given that we had discussions about GitHub actions um, being limited to amount of time we can execute uh, pipeline jobs over a month, or maybe in terms of uh, storage as well, the, the artifacts that are produced, right? Um, and, and yeah, of course, we had discussions about optimizing the pipelines across the projects wherever possible. And I know there was another discussion that was related to project's health status that Jim had proposed. And there was there were really interesting conversations that went through. In fact, um, if you are new to TOC and if you are uh, new to just reading project reports and would like to understand what's important for you to look for in those reports, um, like we could even consider the, the issue discussion that has happened where uh, Jim has proposed about project health status. That discussion itself is pretty overwhelming and, and easy to um, understand like what's 
what are those parameters that we should look for in a project in order to understand that uh, the importance of a project or to know health of a project, right? So, um, I mean, of course, we can bring those topics up for discussion and try to prioritize on which one to pick them up, which of them to be picked up. But um, from different projects perspective, um, I would like you to think through and bring those topics up for discussion in TOC meeting. I know it's a uh, short notice, but if anybody have any suggestions on uh, the burning matters, the important things that we should start looking into, would anybody like to bring those topics up? Um, yes, Peter. From my side right now, the, the most important one is the CI performance. I know that for uh, most projects, uh, it's been sort of fixed because uh, we got upgraded to the paid plan, but uh, for cactus, our cacti, sorry, our need for CI is as in for CI time is much bigger. So actually we just ended up going back to the free plan because it was costing a truckload of money every time to run the CI. Uh, so I don't know if this is universal to all the projects. It probably isn't. It's probably something specific to Cacti, but uh, regardless of that, that's one of my priorities still. Point note, Peter. Anybody else would like to bring up any other priority items? Um, yes, Peter. Well, if no one else, uh, then I have another one, which is uh, automation in general. Uh, a lot of different things within that umbrella that we've been already working on. And there, there's, there are great things out there already, like the reports on the LFX portal are great. But, uh, but I know of a few things that Rye has to do manually that are the stores, in my opinion, that slow everyone down if if we have to do that manually. So I would also focus on just having more automation across the board in different areas where right now there's manual chores involved. Got it. Is this um, to identify some anomalies? Mm, well, first to identify what is reasonably easy to automate that we don't yet automate. That list might have zero things on it because it's, it is possible that we will already pick the low hanging fruit, but then just move up to the medium difficulty one and see which one, what, what would be the easiest there. And then, uh, the bigger chunk of it is probably related to analytics about the projects. Like how do we measure measure project health in a in a sort of using formal methods that are uh, not subjective, you know, when we judge the health of a project. How do we decide oh this project is healthy or not? Of course, in the end, it always has to be subjective, but the more information we have for it, the better. And I know that we had task forces for this, for this in the past. I'm just sort of giving it a, a bump again. And then there's other things like uh, meeting recordings, which I know Rai has been uploading manually. And uh, I think that's also a drain on his time. 
and uh, there was something else, but I cannot remember right now. But I know that there are things like this. When it comes to meeting recordings, um, my plan is to, uh, there is a tool that automatically moves stuff to YouTube. Um, and in, I, I plan on getting that uh, up and running. The difficulty is a lot of the stuff that happens shouldn't end up on YouTube. Um, it's, I, uh, let me see here. Uh, so I don't know if this is actually going to do what I want. So for instance, um, all these meetings for uh, Zoom 3, uh, when this implementer's working group call happens and it's recorded to the cloud, it should go, but they are canceling the recording pretty frequently. Um, let me see here on Zoom 0. What do you mean? What does it mean to cancel the recording? So people, when you join a meeting, the host codes are widely uh, passed around. The identity working group meeting, for whatever reason, doesn't want to use cloud recordings, so they just hit the stop recording button. Uh, the Aries Didcom V2, like this one and like this meeting, they started and then they stopped it almost immediately. And, uh, or this is actually after the main meeting. So someone else joined and it recorded that meeting for a few seconds. That shouldn't end up on YouTube. Um, like these meetings for the Didcom, Aries Didcom V2, you know, that shouldn't end up on YouTube. So it's going to be a matter of user education and figuring out how to tag the meetings. And honestly, it's just as much work to figure out if the the automatic thing should do the thing or I just download it and re-upload it. So, you know, it's right now, it's only maybe a dozen meetings a week, but, you know, I'll, I'll figure that out. Don't worry so much about that in particular. The other thing with the... Um, the GitHub CI, I'm not quite sure what you were asking about. Oh, I wasn't, I did, I wasn't asking about it. I was just saying that to me, that's something that's important and that I will work on it. And if, if others have the same concern, but I, I don't think they have, but if they do, then we can work together across projects. Oh, I thought you were saying there was something manual that I was doing. No, no, sorry. I was just doing a bad job of explaining myself and I, I guess I conflated different points. Okay, no worries. Since, thanks, Peter. Thanks, Rai. Um, so we do have a proposal for task force on optimizing CI pipelines. And this is definitely given that it has been brought up again. We should prioritize on the task force. Um, okay, um, thanks, Peter, for bringing additional topics that we should focus on. Any, um, anybody else, any other pressing issues that we should bring up? If not, um, so Rai, I'm not sure. Do you want to share the screen with a list of all the open proposals that we have? so that we can prioritize on those. And um, we would also need a um, team to volunteer to lead those task force. So for instance, let's say we pick up on the CI pipeline optimization. Would anybody like to preside over those the, the task force, lead the task force? I think that had, yeah, Marcus, Dave, and Timo signed up for it.
Yes, Peter. I I forgot to sign up for it, but I will, slash I would like to. And if no one else is willing to lead it, I'm also willing to do that. Awesome. Thanks, Peter, for signing up. And um and and to all the DOC members who may be new or um 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 like who have been previous TOC uh, in previous TOC as well. This is great opportunity. And you have seen how well the task forces do have been doing in the last quarter or so. And then I also mentioned about the appreciation part that came in. So um, yeah, this is a great opportunity to preside over and then bring in uh, project perspectives. Okay, um, so that's something we will pick it up for the next quarter and then we'll go into the uh, meeting agendas for discussion. Um, next meeting onwards. Thanks, Peter. So um, any other task force that you would like to pick up as a priority item for the next quarter? So we have uh, options where one of that is a project health a status that Jim was trying to put up last um, last year. We can uh, relook into that. The other task force um, based on today's discussion that I feel could be of importance is um, the, I think the closest one to this topic is like badging and life cycle. Would somebody like to um, volunteer and then start putting up agenda and then discuss about the task force, badging and life cycle? Rama, I see you signed up. Um, would you like to do you like to uh, preside over this task force? Uh, I don't think. I mean, uh, it's a bit. This one may be a bit tough, but uh, I mean, if you have some flexibility on it, sure. Right. So, yeah, I think um, you can pick it up and then um, um, okay. bring up bring up topic for discussion. I'm sure everybody will jump in. Okay. Sure. Awesome. So, um, as I'm. So, okay, now formally I'm making that statement that we are going to pick up the badging lifecycle task force as well as uh, the task force on best practices for automated pipelines. These things will go into the agenda item. Oh, I just saw hard messaging uh, saying that we should pick up the Artifact signing, uh, security artifact signing task force as well. Once we wrap up on the vulnerability disclosure, um, that we are waiting for reviews on the Google Doc. Makes sense. Thanks, Hart, for bringing that up. Awesome. Okay, I know we are um, 14 minutes left, and then the next topic that we had on agenda was the task force discussion and Bobby, would you like to um, take over? Sure, thank you very much. Um, and I'm glad that there's going to be more task forces because I do agree with you, Arun, that the way this is structured, that things are really getting done um, and there is a lot of attention. I had a lot of people in the meeting this week, which was nice to see new participants. Um, so I'm encouraged that this is going well um, again. So uh, getting back to what we discussed this week, um, both the documentation task force and the uh, onboarding task force are looking forward to getting a mentee um, to really tie this stuff together. Um, the documentation task force, uh, one of the things we've been working on was getting um, the tasks and the uh, deliverables for the mentee together. So we worked on 
a timeline um, where we had certain categories of deliverables, which I think, um, unless anybody has any um, additions, these are going to be the four we're going to go with. One is the GitHub documents. That would be um, the guidelines and templates for turn and the um, supporting tooling that we offer as Hy at Hyperledger uh, for maintainers um, creating or whoever is creating the documentation from the GitHub repositories to um, let people know how to use the products. Um, so in that, uh, we have a GitHub template uh, set up where uh, we're going to more on the task force than the mentee um, create what should be in all of those and what uh, templates you should choose from. Get that down um, so that uh, when the mentees come on, um, we also at the documentation task force went through the mentee programs um, and a lot of them had asked for documentation or have a documentation piece and um, you know, I spoke with men and we want the documentation mentee to be able to support that. So that's why at, at the task force, we really wanna get that, that done first, the templates and stuff so that we can see with the mentees how that works moving forward to you know, offer this stuff to the projects. Um, so the mentees, we, we determined what projects needed documentation support. And we're gonna have our mentee reach out to um, those projects and see how um, any of these other categories, including the template for GitHub um, can assist them. Um, the other thing that um, the mentorship is gonna do is we have to work closely with the other two task forces uh, for their documentation support. Uh, the first one being best practices. Um, if we're gonna be badging to see, you know, when we move again, looking at that project life cycle that we had up on the screen before, you know, what are the criteria for moving from incubation to graduated? Do you have these, this badge that this task force is going to create? Um, and in that badge comes a documentation piece. What is that documentation and how can the task force, you know, create templates and make that training easier for people to just get that done? Um, as well as the onboarding task force. Um, they need documentation support um, and training materials. So, you know, that will go into a little bit about that onboarding task force in a minute, where those uh, buckets of training materials need to be. Um, but those are the two task forces that the documentation mentee also is going to help support getting that um, discussions going between the two. Um, and finally is the community. Um, there's going to be a big um, changeover in the website soon. Um, logos, all that kind of fun stuff is going to be uh, revamped, updated, modernized, um, and more, you know, for social media, get, getting all that uh, stuff out there. Um, we want to be able to support the community in creating materials for uh not just inside the community, but outside the community. And we want them to reflect the new uh, logos and new templates that will come out of the marketing department. Um, and how can we, as you know, the documentation task force, get that information where it needs to be. So that's another little uh, bucket for the uh, mentees to worry about. Um, again, we're just you know, looking at the candidates. We're waiting for that uh, formalized list of people interested to come through so we can start the interview process. Uh, there'll be interview questions that we'll ask all of them. Um, and basically we were working on the personas, um, who are the user guides in the community? What do they need to, who do they need to be geared for? Um, and again, we're working with the onboarding task force to get these little buttons of education or buckets of education um, where people enter the community, whether it's the website, the Discord channel, the wiki page, uh, the GitHub, uh, wherever people are coming in, uh, we want them to be able to click to get to, who, depending on who they are, where they need to be. Um, so that's basically where the task force um, for that um, is at right now. Does anybody have any questions about the documentation task force? No? Okay, then I'm gonna just move on real quickly to the onboarding task force. 
again, they're working with the same personas. When are people coming on? We did um, an in-depth study. Again, this is a really um, speaking again to Arun's point about the success of these task forces. All of these people, well, other than Tracy, um, are, are basically new to the community. Um, so there's a lot of new people that are getting involved, which is very, very nice to see. Um, so what we did in the task force uh, is we went to each place where people can jump on and figured out like what we feel is needed in those spots. Um, and there was an interesting, the Discord channel had a lot of information um, to be updated, um, stuff like the frequently asked questions and, and, and directing people. So there was a good discussion on that. Um, and we also saw the um, presentation from Ben about the new website and what that's going to look like and how that's going to, you know, have the right tags and, you know, to get more recognition and get up in search engines and that kind of stuff. And this is a, I don't know if I'm supposed to be showing that, but that was the, the new logo look that was in the presentation um, and information. Here is the presentation. I would watch it because it was really, really interesting to see how uh, the future of this uh, foundation is going to look. Um, and that's right there um, on this uh, onboarding task force page. If you want to just see that um, we're coming up for suggestions to Ben from some of the things that we determined as a task force from looking at the old website, what should be improved. Um, and next we really want to get um, moving on redoing those places um, and get the mentee ready. Uh, we didn't do a timeline for the onboarding task force yet. That's next. Um, but again, get him or her certain, um, uh, I guess uh, I'm going to use, you know, uh, major tasks that they have to accomplish in onboarding um, more, not so much tasks, but where people come like the web page, the wiki page, the discord, the, the GitHub, and make them all look the same, make them all have the same uh, really easy clickable information to get people to the training materials that the documentation task force is going to be able to support this task force with. So that's about where we are on the, on the two task forces. We're moving forward. We're getting great uh, uh, community support and we're just gonna keep going. Anybody have any questions about onboarding? Okay, great. That's it for me. I'll turn it back over to you, Arun, and thank you for doing such a good job today. Thanks, Bobby, for the quick updates, and, and thank you. Um, I know we have five more minutes left um, and no more agenda items, but I want to quickly bring up a couple of items for as a foot for thought so that um, we keep thinking about these topics in our upcoming meetings. One topic is about um, 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 new projects that we we should encourage. So if you come across any project within the Hyperledger Labs that you feel like um, needs um, like more appreciation or feed that you feel like, hey, this project is interesting, that we should we should encourage them more, we should bring them up and support them in incubating that. So please uh, bring those projects, uh, please, please bring those topic up for discussion. Um, and the second topic I wanted you all to start also thinking about is Hyperledger uh, Charter was updated recently. And that recent could be months ago now. And, and there were a few items that needed more clarification. And um, that is another aspect that we can start putting down um, our thoughts uh, and then clarify some of those uh, charter items and what does it mean for governance standpoint. So these are a couple of items I wanted to bring up and not necessary to talk through today, but these are the topics that um, you could read through and then bring them up for discussion in upcoming meetings. With that, I think we can end three minutes early if there are no other questions and thoughts. Thank you.